Have you ever wondered why some companies seem to consistently hit the mark with their customers while others struggle to keep up with rapidly changing demands? Well, Rise and Shine leaders, this is Glenn Guyton, keynote speaker and workplace trainer. It's time for our executive coffee break. I've got my beverage in hand, and I hope you have yours too. They say you can't choose your family, but you can choose your workplace culture and your beverage. Leadership matters, so you might as well get good at it. Well, today I want to talk about staying ahead in this fast-paced business world, especially when it comes to understanding and responding to your customers' needs. Now, we've talked a little bit about agile in the past. Again, the agile method isn't just for software development anymore. It's a crucial mindset for any leader striving for excellence in customer service and getting the best out of your team. But how does this tie into leadership and creating an inclusive workplace environment? So let's dive into that. Now, with the Agile method, one of the takeaways is listening better, getting the feedback from your customer. Agile leadership emphasizes the importance of feedback loops, not just within your teams, but also with your customers. By fostering an environment where feedback is actively sought, encouraged, and acted upon, you're not just listening, but you're engaging in dialogue. This practice allows for a deeper understanding of customer needs and challenges, paving the way for better solutions and ultimately a more inclusive product or service offering. Now, is that is that bad? We have a lot of polarization in our society right now in regards to diversity, equity and inclusion. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it woke? Is it not woke? All of that is nonsense when you are in business. You're in business for a number of reasons, one of which is to make money. Uh, one of, it, of them may be your passion to provide a desperately needed service to, to people. And so why would you want to limit that? Why wouldn't you want to provide the best product or the best service for as many people as possible? Now, I know you have your niches. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, you, you you do have certain parameters within your market base, but even within your client base, there is some form of diversity. And diversity isn't just about race; it's about a number of different things, uh, another a number of different identity factors, a number of different demographic factors. And so, if you learn the, these principles of being inclusive minded, you can apply it to a broad number of aspects. Uh, of, of your client base. And just like we're applying this agile methodology to something other than software development, I want you to think, of, think the same way as we think about diversity, uh, inclusion, as you apply it to who you serve. Now, the other thing is we want to design better outcomes, right? Better leaders get better results. Implementing agile principles means embracing adaptability. Adaptability in your design thinking process. Again, this is a, a very important piece for the inclusive minded leader is being able to think differently, thinking outside the box, seeing additional possibilities. It's about uh, getting feedback from the real world, which includes diverse perspectives from your team members and also your customer base. This approach ensures that your solutions are not only innovative, but inclusive, meeting the needs of a wider array of people. By valuing diverse inputs, your design, you design better outcomes that resonate on a broader scale. Now, this isn't about, uh, in another video, I talked about scope creep, right? That we start adding too much stuff. That's not what we want to do here. We want to make sure the products that we do design are applicable across a broad spectrum. One of my favorite examples comes from a really dumb show. Uh, I think uh, Better Off Ted. I don't know if you've ever seen that show. 
but they designed uh, new automated lights on the show, which was it was interesting. So when you walked into a room, the lights would cut on. Very practical thing, right? We have that now. But one of the things that they found out on this show, and again, it was a comedy show, was that the lights didn't work for black people, right? For darker skinned people, the lights would not come on because the the uh, the software or the hardware or whatever couldn't recognize the darker skin tone. And so in in an effort to be more inclusive, the organization put out a memo saying that uh, white black people couldn't walk through the building alone. They had to have a white coworker with them. Now it was a comedy. It was it was it was hilarious. And so the uh, white people had to escort their black coworkers through the building. So the lights would cut on. Now you would think that's hey, it's really far fetched. It was a dumb show with I think Portia De Rossi. I think that's her name. She was in it and some other people. I love the show, but it was making fun of something that really happens in the real world. As you think about uh, software development for cameras and other things that need to recognize people physically, some of those applications haven't worked in the real world uh, because of some bias in the programming. Uh, some software wouldn't recognize uh, the difference in, in some Asian people's eyes, and so they would the camera would think their eyes was closed. Uh, some of these facial rec recognition software now won't recognize darker skinned people, so that's a security risk. So as we think about being inclusive minded and thinking about these things in design, it's not about being woke. It's about being functional. Um, why would you exclude an entire demogra demographic? So you're you're not in even increasing the scope of the project. You're just making sure the the project works within the parameters uh, it, that it was designed, but it works against for a, a wide variety of people. That's what we need to think about when we're when we want to design better outcomes and why it's important to have representation from different backgrounds, from different looks, especially if it's something as as uh, as crucial as <clears throat> facial recognition. We all have different faces and the only way that the computer can learn is it has to have those different faces. And so if we exclude people, if we don't have the right people on our team to ensure we have that diverse representation, we're going to design a flawed project, a product, which is going to have significant uh, repercussions, right? Facial recognition software is used for to access different things for safety, security. If it doesn't work for uh, 15, 20 percent of the population, it's going to be a problem. So we want to capture a wider base when we are uh, looking at some of these things. It's that's important. Capturing a wider customer base uh, is something I think that we all would like, right? Who, who doesn't want a wider customer base or want more people like those people that you're trying to serve? Maybe it's income. There are a lot of different types of people at a certain income bracket. So even if you are excluding lower income brackets, you still want as many people within that swath of people that you're, you're, you're looking at. You want to widen that base. Inclusive minded, uh, inclusive mindedness isn't just good ethics, it's good business. Let me say that again. It isn't just good ethics, it's good, good business. So by listening better and designing with inclusivity at the forefront, you naturally broaden your appeal to a wider customer base. It's about understanding that each individual's needs and preferences can vastly differ and that there's immense value in addressing this diversity through your products and your services. So here is my challenge for you today, dear viewer. Uh, over the next week, initiate a feedback session with your organization or with your customers focusing on inclusivity. Ask, are we meeting the diverse needs of our audience? Of your audience. I'm not telling you to go out and find a different audience, but are we meeting the diverse needs of our audience? And how can we do better? Act on this feedback. Let's see how this mindset shift can open new avenues for growth and innovation. Growth and innovation. Keys to business, business success, right? That's what we want. Growth and innovation. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And let's not forget the perseverance, the strength that it takes to lead with empathy and inclusivity. Better leaders get better results. So to every one of you leading the charge for a more supportive and engaging workplace, I leave you with this. 
stay bold, stay inspired, and remember that your actions today shape the culture of tomorrow. My name is Glenn Guyton, and you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.